My research in mathematics involves the study of knots. To form a knot, imagine taking a piece of string, tying a knot in the middle, and then joining up the two ends so that we really have a knotted circle. The two simplest kinds of knots are the unknot, which has no crossings in its simplest form, and the trefoil, which has three crossings in its simplest form. These knots are not the same because we cannot morph one into the other without cutting open our string. However, this knot is the same as the unknot because we can untwist the strand here to get our unknot. This problem of classification or figuring out when two knots are the same is a classic problem in knot theory. And it's a hard problem because as the number of crossings increases, our knot can get really complicated really fast. As an example, this complicated looking knot is actually the unknot. So why is this useful? Well, knot theory can provide a useful model for DNA. We know that DNA has this double helix structure, but if we simplify a little bit and think of this helix as a line and then zoom out, DNA starts to look a lot like a knot. This is because DNA can be really tangled up and can furthermore break and recombine with the help of certain enzymes. Biologists are interested in studying this process and knot theory can be a really useful way to model DNA as it undergoes this process because it captures the twistedness or knottiness of the DNA. I particularly like this example because mathematicians were studying knots long before we ever had a model for DNA. That's one reason why it's exciting to study math because there might be more applications than we can even currently imagine.